See, they got me stressed out. I'm smoking cigarette after cigarette. So what's happening, Joel? Nothing. So, good to be here. Good to see you. How you doing? You know. Okay. Ozone. You know. I, we, we've been fucking with you since day one. It's just a beautiful thing. We get to catch back up. You know what I mean? Out here in the ATL. You know what I mean? No better place. So what's going on with this? Uh, the Reagan era mixtape. Oh, the Reagan era, the long awaited. First and foremost, I would like to apologize before anything to all my fans. You know what I'm saying. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely gonna be well worth the wait, though. I promise you. I'm just putting the finishing touches on it, and just, you know what I mean? Like I said, it, it, it's been so long that I felt like I, I really need to put out a masterpiece. So the, the, the mixtape is gonna be like an album. It's, it's, it's gonna be limited amount of freestyles, a whole lot of just original music. You know what I'm saying I'm not worried about putting it out in stores. I feel like that's just I owe that to the people right now. You know what I'm saying I owe that to everybody that's that's been supporting me. You know, and I got enough music like just because you ain't here. You know what I mean? I've been in the studio. I got my own studio working, so it, it, it's just locked under lock and key. I'm getting ready to release like within next week. My studio boarded up right now due to a little incident I had with the police a couple weeks ago. I'm sure everybody heard about that. You know what I mean? We can elaborate on that whenever we later on. You know what I'm saying? But um, my studio boarded up, so I got to pay a couple little fines. That ain't about nothing, though. I'll be right back in the studio. Back to live action, baby. The Reagan era will be out very soon, though. Very soon. I'm shooting a video for every song on there. Uh, um, I actually just dropped the Home Run video. Like, the Home Run, that song was just like a, you know, I shot out, I reached out to Wayne. That's just like a mixtape record. Like, and you see how crazy that is. So that's, that's like how the whole mixtape is going to be. Just records like that and just, you know what I mean? Videos like that just for a mixtape. So that's what, that's what you should be looking looking to get off the record now. It's just all hard, just, oh man, I'm just, I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? I'm calm, I'm cool, but I'm very excited. Cause you know, at the end of the day, I know when I do what I do, it's not too many, it's very few that can fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I've been watching a lot of niggas jacking my swag, but you know, that's usual. You know what I'm saying I'm just I'm just so fly and it, and it doesn't really matter to me because I do this this shit like in my sleep so every day is something new for me so when a nigga just getting on to that I'm just moving on it you know what I'm saying that you know what I mean so I ain't really you know the slogan nigga fly up and get flown over miss it ain't get fly I am fly nigga I walk in my closet with the lights off nigga you know what I mean you know, so I told the niggas I walk in the closet with the lights off nigga just take shit <laughs> off the rack nigga you know what I mean so, you know I mean? so were the delays due to the, the legal situation? No, nah, it wasn't just, even. It's just me just, just building up. I just wanted or? to get, yeah, just perfecting it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I did, working with Def Jam, put out a couple records. I was going to just go with just doing the album. You know what I mean? I put out the, um, mixing up the Medicine record, the Back, Back, to, Back to the Crib record with Chris Brown. Um, and just Def Jam, you know, there's a lot of problems in that building, so I definitely didn't want to release my album at that mm -hmm. time with the turmoil. You just get caught up. It was fourth quarter, so, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had the record with Banks, Beamer, Benz, and Bentley. That was a good look. So my thing was all about being relevant. You know what I mean? As long as I'm relevant, people still know. You know what I mean? I'm I'm capable. And, you know what I mean? And they still see in my face. I'm not going to just drop an album and just get caught up in that that turkey plant that they doing. Stamp, ship it, stamp, ship it, stamp, ship it. You know what I mean? I can't do that. So I mean, the mixtape is going to... Preview the mixtape for the album. Preview for the album. I got so much music. I may drop two mix mixtape for the album. You know, I still got the movement skull gang. You know what I mean? You see, Dipset. We just reunited. You know what I mean? So we've been on on the road doing a lot of shows. Right, right before I just touched down here, we just did about three shows back to back. Um, we go on tour March 17th. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With, with, with that. Um, so the tour is the whole Dipset back yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's gonna be a good look. You know and. I'm just still gonna be doing what I do on my own time, just like Jim doing what he doing on his own time, Cam doing what he doing on his own time. You know, that, that that's what made us so great at the end of the day anyway, cause just as much as we, you know what I'm saying, when we get together as a whole, we just do the damn thing. Us as individuals were, were you know what I'm saying, cause stand alone, so. You know, that was always the beautiful part about, about Diplomats. I mean, shout out to Freaky, you know what I mean, the backbone of the set, you know what I mean? All y'all promoters doing flyers, stop not putting Freaky on a flyer. 
Freaky is dipset. Yeah. So do you feel like the whole, as far as Jim and Cam, like the and split between not, them? Initially? might just slap you. When you see. <laughs> do you feel like the initial split was was it a, a money thing, an ego thing? Like what was it that actually? Because I'm sure you went through some times where you it was were a communication caught in the thing. middle. And you know that's all I'm gonna say right now. We back together, and you know it's a blessing. I mean, a lot of people don't get to, you know what I mean, get back together and just do it the right way, like we doing this. So. It's, it's no need for me to really dwell on the past. You know, we, we definitely had our issues with each other. I mean, we squared them away, and it's it's back to live action. It's back to doing what we do best. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we got to deal with Interscope. Shout out to Jimmy Iovine. Um, I'm sure people seen them pictures up with us and Dre. So, of course, you know, we, we've done records with Dre. So, you know, that's... So what? I mean, what was that experience like? It was all that, that was a beautiful experience. Dre had Jim in the booth for about an hour and a half, but it, it was like, that's Dre, and like he's just such a perfectionist. You know what I'm saying? He knows what he wants. He knows what he wants to hear on on, on his, his beats, and it's like, if you gonna have anybody keep you in the booth for for an hour and a half, why not it be Dr. Dre? So you know that that was beautiful, man. Um, just being in the studio. Just more than anything, feeling the energy. He wasn't like a producer that just sat back. He was into it, he had input. You dig what I'm saying? And he just, he was excited. Just as, as we were excited, he was excited. So you know, I, I, I know that made us feel good at the same time. Because once again, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. You know what I mean? Put every ego to the side. That's Certain people are just who they are. And that's Dr. Dre. And then everybody knows what it is, you know what I'm saying? You know, the best of the best know what it is when it comes to, to Dr. Dre, so, you know. But yeah, my album, Born to Lose, Built to Win, I'm just, everything I do now is just step towards that. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's, that's my biggest goal, you know. My my um, my third album, third time is the charm. Yeah, so I'm definitely planning on making this, making this something very special, something very epic. You know what I mean? And then Shot Money different, is, is different, involved. Better. Somehow too, right? Yeah, Shot Money. Shout out to Shot Money. He's up there at Def Jam. He's working my project right now. You know I mean, he's helping me out a lot. You know what I mean, he's bringing a lot of good energy. You know what I mean, he's really behind the project. And you know, he's a good dude. He's a good fella. So did he help set up the Dre situation? Or, or how did that come about? I'm not even going front. The Dre, shout out to Irv Gotti, man. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Shout out to Irv. <coughs> I'ma keep it funky. Like I always knew Irv, you know what I'm saying? I never really had like a personal relationship like that with Irv, but you know, Irv always had good energy through the game, whatever the case. I don't even really know where Irv came into play with it, but you know, it was kinda like this, like, you know, we were back together and I guess I don't know if Irv called Jim or Cam, but it was something like that. And he just had a lot of good energy. You know, a lot of them big labels, you know what I'm saying? They can't really talk to me, Jim, or Cam. They think we, you know what I mean? I rather dip set. So he was like that that puzzle, that 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 piece that kind of like consulted and brung the Jimmy Iovine. So, you know, they were willing to, you know what I'm saying? So he kind of set up the whole Jimmy Iovine meeting, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, shout out to him for that. Um, and Jimmy kind of like, one day Jimmy came, he liked our energy, we had a meeting with Jimmy. Next time he came, they, they was in New York doing something for the beats, the headphones joints, and Dr. Dre was there, you know. He came down, told Dre to come downstairs. Next day, we make a long story short, Dre was supposed to go back the next day. Dre said, if y'all gonna get in the studio, we gonna work, so. To make a long story short, Dre, Dre pushed his flight back, and we got in the studio and did what we did. What we did. So I now, actually had to go to Chicago. But it was Dre, so I flew right back the same day. I went to Chicago, did my little in-store that I had to do, and yeah. flew right back that night. So I kind of got to the session a little late, but I, I wasn't going to miss it for the world. Believe that. So now Diplomats are through Interscope, and you still have the Def Jam? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 the deal is not, you know, inked in, in, in edged in stone, okay. I should say, but... Yeah, we look so like So you're in Interscope. talks with Interscope? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of people got their hands out on a piece of the action because you know, it's definitely going to be some lights, cameras, and action. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the legal situation. I know you already kind of addressed it on, on MTV, but I think, you know, people hear Rapper's Studio, they found weed, whatever. People automatically assume that, you know, it's yours, you're selling it, whatever, whatever. For what I was, 
for the you, you, my, with, with the whole me selling weed shit, that was stupid. Like, come on. Especially the amount of weed that they were saying, like it's a studio. What do rappers do when they go to studios? They take weed, like who? Yeah, that's obvious. Like, right. you know what I mean? But the police, of course, are you know what I mean? If I guess if it's in baggies, they assume it's for, you know what I'm saying, distributing use. Mm -hmm. Like for one, I wasn't there. I wasn't in a session at that time. It's my studio. Yes, I have my own studio, but I wasn't there. I hadn't been in my studio for about a week. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? So, I mean. It's in an area to where, you know, I'm kind of like a target, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm kind of like, what, what, what Ross said, Rose Royce, you they favorite nigga, you know what I'm saying? And my, my situation is like that, you know, I drive through a town, that big old Rose Royce, I'm the only, I'm the only, you know what I mean? Young, black, fly dude moving like that, and you know, I, I guess it's kind of like, they don't understand it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I've always been a target in the area where my studio is located, and, um, that's kind of like what I just felt like it was, you know. They went in there, they found some guns, they found some weed. Like I said, I mean, you probably run in every studio in the world, and that's exactly what you're going to find, right? Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, the studio was in my name. You don't arrest the person that owns the hit factory. You don't arrest the, you know what I mean? The person mm. that owns Stony Studio, you arrest the, you know what I mean? So I didn't really get the whole thing, but like I said, you know, I got my lawyers on it. It's just a little inconvenience, you know what I mean? They just mm. want me to dish out some money. I mean, which they already got me for a cool buck twenty-five already. Plus, you know, I had to bail my, my other homie who was there in the studio at the time. Mm -hmm. My boy Hanif, uh, and um, you know, we we gonna you know, go to court. And it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I'm not really too worried about it. Like I said, I wasn't there. I mean, it wasn't nothing in my possession. I don't. I have no knowledge of what was going on. Why mm -hmm. I'm not? You know what I'm saying on the premises. So, you know, whatever. So what happened with the, the situation with you and Wayne doing an album together? Is that still in the works? Or I know he had his, his legal troubles as well. Shout out to my boy Wayne. That's my dude, my homie, my bro. Mm -hmm. You know, we all go through unfortunate shit. Like, we targets. Just being artists, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like now we targets. They look at us like like criminals, mm -hmm. but it's like, why? For what? When mm -hmm. we trying to... The worst case scenario, say a, a rapper does have a gun, is to defend himself. He's not out trying to commit a crime. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah, ain't gonna be there, the police ain't gonna be there. I mean, we had targeted, but um, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, but as far as the album with me and Wayne, you know, that was a lot of politics involved. You see, um, Wayne and T-Pain was supposed to come out with the album, right? Mm -hmm. That didn't even happen. You know, when you're dealing with big labels, you got big artists, and there's so much going on, just as much as you got, you had Diplomats, Cash Money, you had um, Def Jam, um, Universal which is all the same. There's just a lot of things that had to come. I'm just glad me and Wayne still have our relationship. And I mean, we still got at least about 20 records that's still stuck in a computer somewhere that probably just gonna release, you know, cause it's not really about the money. Us doing the album wasn't about the money. You dig what I'm saying? So it's just really about, you know, two dudes that kind of like, have the same struggle, go through this, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. same walk, bring, give the same type of energy. Like he's from the South, I'm from now. I was the young one out of my camp. He was a young one out of his camp. You know what I mean? Fly dude, fly dude. You know what I mean? It's just a, so, you know, we both kind of had something that we could, we, we could, you know what I mean? We was, we so it was more like clearances and stuff like that that kept you yeah, doing things, just, album. Just, Yeah, a couple different things that just mm -hmm. they make the album go through. But like I said, me and Weezy, we still, we still on the same page as far as us go. So. That ain't really about nothing. One way or another, y'all gonna hear them records, so believe that. That's what's up. You know what I mean? So do you have an opinion on uh, uh, this whole situation in Egypt? I know people think that rappers don't really keep up with current affairs and whatnot, but uh, do you see any any um, lesson that we can take away from it in the U.S.? I'm gonna keep it funky. I'm lost. You, you got me. You got me. <laughs> Got me right now. All right, there's a big revolution going on in Egypt, yeah, yeah, but I guess yeah, yeah. you're not you're not keeping up. I don't even think it's because I'm be honest, I don't know why. Cause my, my shit, uh, for real, you gotta think. I leave the studio, and I haven't even been in the studio for the last couple couple of weeks now. Cause due to the situation, I wasn't there the week prior to the situation that happened. Then I wasn't in there now because it was boarded up. Mm -hmm. So I'll be in my house, and every morning the news is on. But I must have really just missed this Egypt thing. Cause I don't, I'm gonna keep it funky. I'm kind of lost with that one. But yeah, bring me in. What's up? Oh, it's all good. I, you know, I asked Twitter for some questions for you. That was one of the questions. What's going? Oh, no, I'm saying, what's going on in Egypt? Though? Um, there's a big revolution, and they basically got the president to resign, and it's been rioting. And 
president shut the internet off and TVs off. They had no, they had no communication with the outside world. Yeah. President shouldn't have that much power. That's why I think New York, like, like I'm not New York. I'm saying like the United States, because even the president don't have that much power. Even the president. He can give orders, but certain things have to be filtered to, to certain people. You can't just react off your own emotions and your own, you know what I'm saying? I don't think no president should, should, should have that much power to where they can react off their own emotions. Everything should be be able to be filtered through, through a meeting and, and just, you know what I mean? Other people, you can't wake up on the wrong side of the bed and because shut people shit off. Mm -hmm. like, that's crazy. Well, that's that's democracy, right? Yeah, like that's like, what, what do you balances. call them type of people? Those are not even like that's like dictators. Giant, what do they, dictators, yeah, man. Like, yeah, you can't have. I'm not for that, man. If it was a dictator running the United States, I'd be gone. I'm not. You know what I mean? Because that's like that's too crazy, man. All right, so here's another Twitter question: How do you feel about OJ the Juice Man yelling "A" all the time? Kind of took your little catchphrase. <laughs> it was funny to me when, when OJ came out. I mean, you know, he put his own little swag on it, his own little twist. Like I said, man, I'm used to people. And I mean, I feel like, you know what I mean? I influence a lot, a lot of different people. You know what I'm saying? I'm not to say, like, he, he took it from me or nothing, you know? I fuck with um, Gucci and them. So it is what it is. Like, it was funny to me, you know? So you decided to call it the, the, the Reagan era because of the... The crack influence during the Reagan era? Um, the Reagan era is just about, I right, for one, I'm from Harlem. Like, Harlem was one, we, that epidemic around that Reagan era time was just so influential to Harlem, so influential to what Harlem was built on, the way that whole drug era, and what, what, we, what we saw coming up. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? And, 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 and just the love that, just as much as you've seen the, the drugs, the people on drugs and the selling drugs, not to promote that, but just the, the love, the energy that was in Harlem, the, the feeling of people being able to walk around, drive around, buy, niggas had cars for the days, you know what I'm saying? Monday car, Tuesday car, Wednesday car, Monday bitch, Tuesday bitch, Wednesday bitch. Mm -hmm. You step on a nigga sneaker, he throw him in the garbage, go buy a new pair right there. That type of shit was going on. Just the, That's where all this this comes from, those days. So that's, that's what the essence of me saying the Reagan era is about, just bringing back that energy. Like, it was a whole lot of recession shit going on. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? The Reagan era is like, the restart of the recession. Like, nigga, get your hustle on. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. It's the Reagan era, you know what I mean? Go ahead, sell whatever you want to sell. You know what I'm saying? Now, it ain't got to be crack, because my crack, I ain't selling crack. I'm selling music crack. So at the end of the day, I'm not promoting it in that, in that route, but you know. Oh, I just, you I just asked that, because you said know. that in, the, in an you know online saying? interview. Get it so. how you get it, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, that, it's, it's just that feeling. Like the Reagan era was a, was a feeling. It was a it was a the good was, economy. Yeah, it was a you good, the good days, the good man. It was just reminiscent of of what this shit was built on and taking it back to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that hard, that all uh, that you know, get money. Don't take no shit. Do your own thing. So you feel like the swaggy. streets aren't like what they used to be, kind I mean, of thing. That, I mean, ain't nothing what it used to be. Yeah. The world ain't what it used to be. <laughs> I mean, birds is dropping out. This ain't shit what it used to be. Like, it ain't even got a... We ain't even going to narrow it down to one thing. The streets ain't what it used to be. Ain't shit what it used to be. Cars ain't what they used to be. Kids ain't what they used to be. You know what I mean? Soda ain't what it used to be. The fuck? Weed ain't what it... Ain't nothing what it used to be. Shit. Weed ain't. Life ain't what it used to be, man. That's a song right there. I mean, word. Yeah, a lot of titles, man. There's two titles within this whole family matters and what it used to be, man. Ain't shit like it used to be. So you just all about adapting and you know, being able to change with the times and I mean, but everything's a three sixty, everything kinda like comes back around, but it's the way you handle it, the way you deal with it when when, when that time comes, you know. It's just a different breed of breed of people. You know what I'm saying, you know. Like now is really like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you talk about the generation, but you don't really see how effective the generation is to after like maybe a 20 years period when them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Them other kids really get to grow up and they are the generation and they're, they're the ones dictating what's going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not literally, but just, you know what I'm saying? By, by the way dress people are dressing, what, what, what's the new hustles and, you know what I'm saying? Kids do, you know what I mean? You have right. kids too, right? Yeah, I got kids. I got two. I just had a newborn. That's my, my, my homie. And I got my other son, Juju. He's six. Um, uh, that's the, those are my, that's what I do it all for right now. The kids are the, kids are the best, man. 
I'm saying it's nothing like that. Well, I guess your son isn't old enough to push you up on any new uh, music yet. Nah, nah, nah. He probably nah. will. He put, I'm putting him up on the music, though, but he's, he, he be... He on it though. He knows all the words. Like my, my son, you know these kids with this music. Music is like, that's why I feel like music ain't going nowhere. It's no way nobody could ever tell me music is from hip hop. Like you'd never say hip hop is going on. Like do you see the influence it has on kids? Like more than even movies and stuff like that. Like kids adapt to music. It's a feeling in music. It's something about music. And you know what I mean? Like it's. It's just something about music that people will always be able to relate to. It, you know what I mean? It's like the theme song that people love. See Chubby Baby in the building whenever we in the ATL. You know what I mean? Fucking with the homie Chubby Baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got um, you got Slow Bucks TV. What other yeah, stuff Slow you got? Bucks going shirt on. on. You yeah. see that? That's um, that's family right there. You know. That's my homies, know what I mean? They just doing something real positive and I'm just real happy to see them see them doing it. I mean, just just look forward forward to it. Slowbugstv.com. So what is Coming what is soon. Slow Bucks TV? Is I mean it's just gonna be a variety of things. Like I'm um promoting artists, um helping helping artists, know what I mean, get deals, helping artists, know what I mean, network, um, along with just putting up putting up a lot of footage of just, I mean, similar to what other websites do, just keeping you up on the newest, flyest things, giving away money, got a $100,000 giveaway going on right now, so, I mean, and you know, it's my home team. So what do they have to do to win them? The that's my man Slow, actually, right there. Slow Bucks is two people. It's my man Slow and Shout out to Bucks, Bucks. Here with us right now. You know Shout out to Ozone Magazine. You know Shout out to Sue. So how do we win the hundred thousand? How does that work? Basically, what we doing is we giving a hundred thousand dollars in each region. You know what I'm saying? So if you do the math, that's four hundred thousand in total. And we just we letting people put up their music, upload their music to our website, and you know let the people within their region decide if they should determine if they win or not. Basically, what so we doing? Get some most views basically, what we, yeah. Basically, what we doing is really giving you a chance, you know, to put yourself out there and you know let the people decide and not, giving you money for it. And giving you money for it, you know, and the money just basically we give you information, we give you the guidance that you need, and this that 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 you're not gonna get, you know, that the labels don't tell you about, you know what I'm saying? So basically, what we do is we give you the money and show you how to work the money and what you should pay and what you should not pay for, and you know, basically working on your situation. So that's what we're doing, and not only that, we also doing stuff in the community. Schooling, you know, it's school. Shout out, I love my life. Stop the violence. We Fast just life. Some, we just did something with Russell Simmons. Shout out to Russell Simmons and Maino Russell Hard. We was out there in City Free Hall. Free 80. We was out get there, well 80. We was out there in City Hall doing something positive for the kids, you know, and that just for everywhere, for the whole for the nation for the whole nation worldwide. We wanna you know I mean, promote stop the violence, it's peace week. And it's swaggy too. We can you on that on that this this is my yesterday slow bucks giddy up. That's slow, bucks from here right there. slow bucks now. Slow bucks skull gang. You know what I'm saying? What, that's the day Skull Gang is the label. Slow Bucks is the, it's just the, you know what I mean? Affiliate, you know what I mean? It's all one umbrella that we just, you one know umbrella. what I mean? Just, Skull Gang first. Where my hat at though? Let me show them the whole, the whole, the whole swaggy giddy up though real quick, man. Show them how it's just doing it, man. It's all about putting this together real quick, man. The A stands for since we're in Atlanta, shout out to the A stands for the and that's also that's, that's the same. Cold drops right there. That's how you do that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Top to bottom. You know what I mean? Alright, so anything else you got going on you want to plug? Any, um, anything um, else we should look out for? Just pay attention, baby. This free pay-per-view, man. Don't pay for that basic cable no more. You know what I mean? Happy I'm seeing you again. Always make sure you stay tuned and you checking out Ozone. You know what I mean? Hottest, hottest down south magazine website popping you know what i mean and julie is a is a great person you know what i mean that's my home girl right there you know what it is she's been holding us down and um i got a movie i did actually too um with, um megan girl called on um, video girl that should be out maybe like the end of this year breaking into that little like that little movie movie thing and um it was good being on set while i wasn't with her let me see how she do her thing you know what i mean and um Things of that nature. I'm just, just look for Joel Santana to be doing everything. This is definitely going to be a, a interesting year for me, an interesting year for people to, that's watching me <laughs> and paying attention to what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So you know, just follow, follow the drip.
Follow the splash, baby. You know what I mean? Follow me, you might wind up in front of everybody else. <laughs> That's what I tell them. If all you punks keep kicking up dirt, keep kicking up dust, you're bound to get dirty in your face, punk. Whoa.